Hi, so welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be looking at naming ligand complexes. So these are quite complicated to name, and these are the rules here. So the rules are that for these um, complexes, we write the cation name first and the anion name second. So it's similar to what we do for ionic compounds, so such as sodium chloride, where we, we write sodium and then chloride, so the cation and the anion. So we do the same thing for the transition metal complexes. Um, when we're writing the name within the complex, we write the ligand's name before we write the metal's name. So even though the metal's written in first and then the ligands, or it might be the other way around depending on if it's a cation or an anion, you always put the ligands first and the metals second. When you're listing the name of the ligands, we put them in alphabetical order. So the second rule is the ligand name so if it's an anionic ligand, it ends in the letter O, whereas if it's a neutral one, um, it bears the name of the original molecule, such as in this table here. So when there's multiples of the same ligand, we use the di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa to say how many there are. If the ligand name has a di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, within the name of the ligand, then we move on to the other set of prefixes and we use the bis, tris, tetrakis, pentakis, hexakis. So these ones here, um, and we put them in brackets. Okay, so one common ligand for that one would be the ethylene diamine. Because we've got the di in there, we would then need to use the bis, tris, tetrakis, pentakis, hexakis, nomenclature. With the metal, if it ends in, uh, if it's an anion, then it has the um, ending of eight. Okay, and here is a, um, a list you look at. And the Roman numerals are indicated to give the oxidation number on the metal in the complex. So there's quite a lot of rules. Um, Depending on your subject, you may be given some of these uh, or you may need to remember a small set or maybe a large set if you're a little bit unlucky. So for the courses I teach, this is the table that I provide to the students and the rest of the information they will need to remember. But we usually stick to a couple of classical examples. So let's have a go at applying this in principle. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go from the formula into the nomenclature, and then we're going to do some examples where we're doing the reverse. So we're going from the nomenclature uh, into the formula. Okay, so these are the two examples we'll start with. So you can see where the metal is, and you can see, um, so we've got the metal here, okay? We've got the ligands coordinating to that metal. This is our complex ion. And then we've got the Cl minus coordinating with that. Um, similar to an ionic compound where you've got the cation and the anion. So what we wanna do, we've identified the metal, okay? We want to work out what the charge is. Okay, so to work out the charge on that one there, we would pull this apart and we would say, okay, so this is a Cl, we know Cl is a minus charge, so this complex here must have a positive charge on it. So if this has a positive charge, we need to look at the ligands that are attached and see what charges they have. Cl has a minus, so this accounts for two minus. NH3 is neutral, so it's a zero there. So what do I need this metal to have to give me a positive overall if I have a two minus there? So this would be a three plus, minus two would give me a one plus overall. So this is a plus three uh, ligand. So when I put that name together now, so the names of these ligands, we have our NH3, which is our amine.
And here we have our chlorido. Okay, so we're adding uh, chloride and we're adding the O on the end there. Now, how many of these? We've got four, we've got two. So we would use uh, the terminology di and tetra. So we've got di, we've got tetra. So our rhodium metal. So the way that we put this together now is we put our ligands first in alphabetical order. So the A comes before the C. So it'll be tetra, amine, di, chlorido. Then we put our metal. So it's rhodium and the charge. And I've run out of room there. So that is the cation and then the anion would be chloride. Okay, so the name would be tetraamine dichlorido rhodium 3 chloride. So pulling it all apart, let's have another go with this example here. So here we had the metal um, transition metal that was in the cation. Here we've got the transition metal that's in the anion. So pulling it apart to work out the charge. So this is a plus one. So we've got a plus two. So this one would be a two minus to cancel that one out or minus two. Cl's a minus six because we've got six of those. So the Ti to cancel out with minus six and give us a minus two overall must be a plus four. So the metal name there would be, so titanate I4 um, for the four plus, uh, IV, sorry, the four plus. So then we've got chlorido and we've got six, so it's hexa. And we've just got potassium here. So remember, we've got the um, the pieces here. So then we've just got to put them together. So the cation always comes first. So potassium. And then we put the ligands, so it'll be hexa, chlorido, and then the, the metal. Okay, so potassium, hexa, chlorido, titan, eight, um, four plus. Alrighty. So the main thing with these questions is remembering the names for the metals, depending on the resource that you might get um, and the ligands there. So now let's go from the name into the formula. Okay, so these are massive. They're really fun to solve. So let's have a go at doing these. Um, you can see that one of them, we've got the metal as a cation and one we've got it as the anion. Okay, so that's one section. So that's the cation, the anion section, and then we've got the cation and the anion section. Actually, no, the metal's here. Okay, so let's have a go at looking at these ones. So we've got our um, potassium, diaqua, tetrabromido, vanadate, uh, three. So putting the little pieces to the puzzle. Um, so working back the other way. So V3 plus is our metal. Potassium is our counter iron. We know that has a plus on it. Uh, we might need to know that, so we'll write it down anyway. 
Um, Di Aqua, so H2O, we've got two of them, and Tetrabromido, so we've got BR, and we've got four of those. So putting together as the complex um, V, uh, that's a three plus. We don't write the three plus in there, but we need to know that that's a three plus. So if we work out the overall charge here, so I'll scribble it in here and then take it out. So we've got a three plus there. Water is neutral, so there's no charge. Bromine's negative one, so we've got four minus. So we've got three plus, four minus, that will give us a minus overall. So we would need one potassium to counterbalance that one negative that we would have. Okay, so wiping out those charges now. Actually, I might just write it below. So K, V, H2O, 2, Br, 4. So that would be the answer there. Okay, so let's look at this next one here. So this next one is interesting. We've got um, two metals in this one. We've got zinc and then mercurate. So we've got bis, ethylene diamine. So we've used bis because we've got the di in here. We've got zinc 2, tetra iodo, uh, mercurate 2. So our metals there would be Zn2, uh, 2 plus. Um, and Hg2 plus here. So we've got the iodo and we've got four of them. And we've got the ethylene diamine and we've got two of those. So putting it together, we would get Zn2 -N um, This is a two plus here. This is neutral, so it'd be two plus overall. Putting this one together, we would get HGI4. Sorry, that needs to be on the outside there. So HG is a two plus. I4 would be a negative four, because we've got four minuses. So four minus plus two gives us minus two overall. So they actually cancel out minus two and plus two. So if I write out the full one there without my scribbles there, Zn, En, two, Hg, I, four. That would be the answer. Alrighty. Cool, that was fun. So thank you for joining me for this video and going through a real basic introduction into nomenclature. So depending on your course, you'll get different data. You may not get data, you may need to write learn it all, but there, there is a fun um, pattern to solving these. So um, enjoy your practice problems and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.